trees. My talk's meant to be more introductory, um, so uh, it will be. I'm going to start with uh, stuff that uh, should feel like a reminder to most of you, um, which is uh, just some basics of branching processes. So, the, so what, what my talk is meant to be introductory to is a study of um, percolation in a lattice setting. Um, and of course, uh, so we'll, later Jack will be talking about the Euclidean lattice ZD, which is a uh, regular graph. Okay, so I'm gonna restrict my discussion to um, branching processes and first passage percolation on regular trees. Uh, so this is, this is not only um, sort of, sh should not only feel familiar, it's, uh, it's even a special case of what should feel familiar. So, uh, um, but this particular setting has the nice uh, property that um, uh, we can think of uh, the branching process quite explicitly as being a percolation process. So let's, let me write B uh, for the infinite rooted binary tree. Okay, um, and um, I'm going to write, um, I'm gonna name its levels. Maybe I didn't make a copy of this drawing. So the root has, um, the root is, I'll write zero for the origin in analogy to the origin in ZD. And then each node has exactly two children. Okay, so here's level one of the tree, level two, level three, and so on. So the size of the nth level is two to the n, okay? And now, um, so we'll percolate this as follows. So for some parameter p and zero one, form a subgraph, uh, which I'll denote bp of this binary tree um, by uh, randomly deleting edges. So um, I'll give myself a, a field uh, uh, of random variables, okay, which are iid, and each xe is going to be uh, zero with probability p, and one with probability one minus p. Okay, so I'm thinking now of um, uh, keeping the zero edges and throwing away the one edges for my percolation process. Okay, so that's um, uh, so, so BP has edges um, E and ET uh, such that XE is zero. Okay, so this is maybe uh, uh, the um, sort of complement of the way the percolation clusters usually would be defined where the one edges are kept, but when, when in the context of first passage percolation, we want to think of, we're gonna be thinking of the um, edges within a cluster as having zero cost to traverse. Um, so it's natural for the weight associated with those edges to be zero. Okay, um, and, then we'll, and then we can, uh, uh, so I'll write um, C of V for the cluster of V in this, um, percolated tree. So I'm, so this is really the downward cluster, if you like. So this is the subtree uh, of V of BP. So BP is a forest um, and the, and C of V is the subtree of BP rooted at V. Okay. So um, maybe, uh, you know, here's a, a, a picture. Um, uh, if we think of the highlighted edges here as having uh, cost zero, then the cluster, then here we would see uh, sort of the cluster of the origin. This is the origin and this is part of the cluster of the origin. Okay, so that should feel, um, uh, that should feel familiar to everyone. If, if, there, if, uh, if anyone is, has any hesitations with what I just said, uh, please speak up. Um, and now I'm going to um, define, uh, so theta of P is the percolation probability. So this is, um, I'm trying to make my, um, I'm gonna have two different kinds of thetas, one of them for an uh, Landau asymptotic notation and one for uh, uh, the percolation probability. So this is, um, this is just the probability that the cluster of a node 
in BP uh, is infinite. Or written another way, this is the probability that the, that the origin is connected to infinity in BP. So this is, uh, uh, these are just um, sort of two sets of notation for the same thing. Okay. Um, so now, so, so we're asking the question for a given um, thinning, depending on how, how, much, how many of the edges we remove um, or keep depends on this parameter P and, we're, and, and theta of P is asking about whether or not the um, origin has a positive, has, or what the probability that the origin um, is in an infinite cluster afterward is. So uh, a theorem uh, that I, you all know, which is, um, you know, we could we could think of this special case of the fun fundamental theorem of branching processes. Says that um, so theta of p. Um, I'm I, I'm omitting the b here now, but theta of p is zero, if and only if p is at most a half. Right. So if the proportion of edges that we keep, the proportion of zero weight edges, is at most a half, then uh, the cluster containing the root looks like a. Uh, this is a, a branching process with uh, offspring uh, distribution binomial to p. There's two possible children, each is present with probability p. Fine. Um, and um, so uh, I'd like to um, state a slightly more quantitative version of this. Um, so this is a phase transition in the behavior of this percolation uh, model on a regular tree. Um, uh, and the phase transition occurs at this point, p equals a half. So um, we just see two regimes if we state things like this, uh, but we see three regimes if we ask a slightly more quantitative question. So uh, for p greater than a half, uh, we have that the probability that the cluster containing the origin uh, is infinite is positive. For p less than a half, the um, not only is that cluster um, finite with probability one, uh, but uh, the probability that the cluster size exceeds n uh, decays exponentially in n. Okay, so there's some positive constant depending on p uh, such that the probability um, decays like that. Okay, so this is uh, notation meaning um, so within constant multiple of so the left and the right are within a constant multiple um, and then um, so this talk and the next one are primarily going to be about the critical case um, though I will spend a little bit of time on 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 this case uh, before we get there um, uh, so in the critical case we still have finite clusters but they have um, they have uh, different um, behavior. So the cluster size now um, decays only uh, polynomially instead of exponentially. And in fact, it decays like one over n to the half. Okay, so in the sort of language of percolation, this is the statement that the cluster size exponent uh, which is um, denoted delta is a half. Okay, so this is, I'll, I'll say a little more about that shortly. Um, in this case, um, we can also ask about uh, um, what uh, is the probability that the cluster containing the origin reaches a distance um, n from the origin. Okay, so this is to say that um, the cluster um, of, whoops, of the of the origin in uh, BP has non-empty intersection with the nth level of the tree, okay, and uh, uh, I see there's been a little bit of uh, of chat. Anything I need to respond to? 
I think there was a question about whether uh, in your last slide, last line, whether V was zero or if this was independent of the choice of V. Uh-huh, uh, right, sorry, yes. V. Yeah, so this could be any node because um, we're, because we're, well, yes, we're only looking downward in the tree. So that makes uh, the picture, the clusters are, um, the clusters are unidirectional. So the, um, the, um, the probability that you're connected to, inf uh, that you're in an infinite cluster doesn't depend on the node in question. The, the, the downward tree looks the same for all nodes. Okay, so, um, so uh, this, the probability that the cluster has um, diameter, if you like, n um, is, um, is uh, decaying like one over n. Okay, and so this is the statement that the uh, diameter exponent rho is, um, so there's sort of, if you think this is a one over n to the one, the diameter exponent is, is, a, is a one here. Okay, um, so um, uh, yeah, um, so uh, this this um, this is going to come up in Jack's talk as well. In in the um, in the in the lattice setting, there's a distinction between um, uh, an intrinsic and an extrinsic diameter exponent. So um, the question of whether or not in a given cluster there's a path of a given length. Um, and versus how far in the Euclidean sense apart are the endpoints of that path um, uh, are different. So I just got a technical question for the speaker. Do, the, do you have the option to share your slides via a link? So the slides um, are, have, should have been made available on the One World website. If not, then they're available on my own website, uh, which is... Uh, they are on the website. Okay, great. So you can also get to them by going to problab.ca slash Luigi and then going to uh, clicking on talks and uh, there's a link to the slides from there. Okay, any other questions so far? Okay, so, um, so that's, this, that's a sort of quick primer on, um, on the behavior of percolation clusters on a regular tree. Um, what I'd like to do next is start talking about first passage percolation on this same regular tree, okay? And to keep things perfectly concrete, I'm only gonna talk about first passage percolation where the passage times are zero, one valued random variables. Okay, so really the, um, we're going to have IID first passage times. They'll be these times XE, and uh, that's, the, um, that's gonna be the exclusive setting of the first passage percolation discussion in this talk. No new um, notation, well, very little new notation is gonna be needed from here, um, or no new randomness anyway. Um, okay, so let me, um, uh, start the next section then. Um, this is, uh, so now we're, we're going to talk about first passage percolation on trees. Okay, so let me, um, let me uh, write uh, TXY. Um, so this is the passage time from X to Y. So this will just be defined to be the sum over the edges on the xy path in the tree of xe, or equivalently, this is the number of ones on that um, xy path because our random variables are only zero one valued. Okay, and then I'll set um, tn to just be the, um, the smallest first passage time from the root to any node at the nth level. Okay, so um, maybe I'll take a picture. Right, so here um, uh, in this picture, the passage time from uh, X to Y, whoops, that's, um, that's wrong. The passage time from, no, that's correct. The passage time from X to Y is, uh, is two here, the edges um, the clusters are um, highlighted in yellow, so the, all the edges which have been highlighted have weight zero, and all the edges which have not been highlighted have weight one. So there's, um, so the cost of this path is two, and T four, so the smallest weight path from the origin to level four uh, has weight one. So no matter how we start, um, we're going to pay one um, to reach level one, but then after that we could, uh, for example, take uh, take this path down to level four and pay no further cost. Okay, um, good. So, um, 
So just as there was a phase transition in um, the, uh, the size of the cluster of the origin at p equals a half, um, there's a phase transition in the behavior of this, these first passage times Tn at p equals a half. Okay, so um, let's take the three cases in turn, just as we did for, uh, for um, non-first passage percolation or percolation. Okay, so for, for p bigger than a half, uh, so here, um, We, we, we saw that, um, you know, the probability that the origin is actually connected um, to infinity by a zero weight path is positive, okay? So that tells us that, um, in fact, um, so for any n, uh, right, if there's, a, if there's a path to infinity, then there's a path to level n for any n. So that tells us that, um, the infimum over all n of the probability of the first passage time to level n is zero. That's just um, the infimum of the probability that the origin is connected to ln and vp is positive. Okay. Um, and if you sort of imagine um, s starting uh, from, say, all of the nodes at level four, uh, and asking if any of them make it to infinity, if any of their clusters is infinite, well, um, now that gives you um, 16 times as many chances. You know, if you, um, there's, there's certainly going to be um, sort of someone within a bounded distance of the root who, um, who connects to infinity at zero cost. And so in this case, uh, uh, these first passage times Tn will in fact converge almost surely to some limiting random variable T infinity, which is almost surely finite. Okay, so that's just saying that when you have a positive probability of, uh, of being in an infinite cluster yourself, with probability one, you're at a bounded distance uh, from, uh, from an, an infinite connected component. Okay. Um, so um, that's so much for the case P greater than a half, that's the supercritical case. Um, in the subcritical case, um, the situation is a little more um, delicate. So, um, uh, but at least I can uh, tell you what the answer is by, um, if you'll believe that the first moment method uh, predicts uh, first passage times. at least uh, to first order. Okay, so, uh, so what do I mean by this? Uh, so for C in zero one, let's, um, let's approximate, um, uh, let's, let's think about um, the expected number of nodes um, in the nth level uh, which can be reached from the root um, at cost um, Cn. So the number of nodes in the nth level, such that the number of ones on the path from the root to that node is exactly Cn floored. Okay, well, um, that's an easy computation. Um, there's two to the n possible nodes. Okay, for, for, any, for any single node at level n, um, we just have n independent Bernoulli p random variables on the path um, between uh, uh, the root and, and v, the root in that node. So, um, so we just have this expectation is just a 2 to the n times the probability that a binomial n 1 minus p is cn, right? Remember, 0 was the probability. P was the probability of a zero, one minus P was the probability of a one. And the first passage time account is counting ones. Okay, so this is two to the N, um, uh, N choose CN, and then we have uh, one minus P to the CN, uh, P to the one minus CN. 
Okay, and now if you just, uh, you know, do a quick computation with Sterling's formula and write and put everything into the exponent, uh, you get that this is roughly, so e to the n log two, and then you get a, um, from this uh, binomial coefficient, you get a c log one over c plus one minus c log one over one minus c. Um, and then from this uh, term, you get a, uh, a c log one minus p plus one minus c log p. Okay. Um, so, um, so if I um, say I give uh, this stuff here a name, let me call that um, uh, uh, x of p c. Okay. So that this is x is telling me the um, sort of um, exponential unlikelihood of seeing a node um, at value around c n um, at level n. And this, but this log two is telling me is accounting for the exponential growth of the number of uh, possible nodes. Um, then, uh, so when p is less than a half, um, uh, what happens? So, um, well, for c near one, um, the, it's a, uh, it's reasonably easy um, to so. Remember, when p is less than a half, our binomial is biased toward one, so it's um, so it's easier to have ones than zeros. And in this case, um, so log two plus x p c, this ex this exponent here is positive, and so this expected number up here, let me call that star. Um, so this grows exponentially in n. Okay, whereas for c near zero, so now um, the bias works uh, of our uh, binomials toward um, value one works against us. Um, this exponent is negative, and um, so that tells us that the expected number of particles with first passage time c n is now decaying exponentially. In n. Okay. Um, so somewhere, um, okay, so if there's, so if in expectation there's very few particles um, with uh, um, whose first pass, at level n whose first passage time is Cn, then with high probability there are no such particles by the first moment method. But my supposition is that this, is that the first moment method actually predicts the first passage times to first order. So to make that um, a little bit uh, more um, precise, let me then write c star for the value at which this um, this c goes the, this this expression here um, flips from positive to negative. So that that will be the smallest um, c such that um, log two plus um, x p c is uh, is positive. Okay, which written otherwise is the smallest c such that the expected number of nodes um, his first passage time is nodes at level n his first passage time is cn um, uh, tends to infinity as n tends to infinity okay the the sort of the, the this little this fact about growth exponential growth versus exponential decay tells me that this these two statements are equivalent okay um, uh, then and so note that um, so this c star is uh, is strictly positive if and only if p is less than a half. This is sort of equivalent to the um, the um, trichotomy that we're um, that we're developing. Um, then we have uh, the following theorem. Well, just like before, what I said what I stated is the fundamental theorem of branching processes was really a special case of the fundamental theorem of branching processes. What I'm going to tell you right now is a, a special case of a of a theorem that sort of comes out of a sequence of papers from the um, 1970s, and collectively they um, they proved this statement in some generality. Um, so it's often called the hammersley kingman biggins theorem. Says that um, this first passage time to level n divided by n 
converges uh, almost surely to this constant C star as n tends to infinity. Okay, so the x, so this is the a sort of formalization of the statement that the that whoops that the threat that uh, the expectation threshold for um, uh, for the first passage times uh, really does tell us the true first order behavior. Okay, but finer statements can be made. So in fact, um, so if we ask about um, the the next um, the corrections to this first order behavior. Um, uh, so that, that's a bit um, of a tangent from the main direction of this talk, but I'll just tell you um, sort of quickly um, what sort of thing um, happens in some generality. So there's some second constant, um, which uh, also depends on P or more generally on the branching distribution, um, also positive, um, such that, so Tn minus now, if we subtract off um, this first order term c star n, and then the second term uh, is a is a logarithmic um, term in n, um, then now um, just with this recentering, but without any rescaling, um, uh, we obtain convergence and distribution to some uh, limiting random variable t infinity. So the, that the limiting distribution depends on uh, on the value of uh, of p in question. Presumably, you mean almost fully finite. Uh, sorry. Yes. Thanks. It's almost surely a random variable as well. Um, good. Thank you, Christina. Okay. So um, so that's. Uh, there's this, this is um, known in varying levels of generality. The most, I think the most, the sort of definitive uh, word on, on this comes from um, uh, uh, Eli, Eli uh, Adekon, um, um and maybe, uh, well, sometime in the 2010s. Um, um, and then there's uh, previous work uh, by, uh, Ramson, Zaituni, um, myself, uh, with my uh, doctoral supervisor, Bruce Reed, um, and um, m many others um, uh, have done related work. Um, there's some lovely, um, if you're interested in learning more in that direction, I'll just point you towards uh, uh, Zan Shi's uh, book on uh, branching random walk. Um, there's a link in the um, slides which Nate Eldridge uh, linked to uh, in the chat, um, and uh, um, or you can um, just go to Zanchi's webpage and look at this preprints. It's in there. Um, okay, so uh, so so much for what have we done? We've we, in the first passage percolation setting. Now we've talked about the off-critical oh, cases. Sorry, of, uh, sorry. There's a question about uh, what you can say about the law of t infinity. Um, one can say things. Um, I'm not going to right now. Um, it's uh, roughly speaking, it's related to the early, um, the, 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 the behavior in the sort of near the top of the tree. So for example, if, if it, if it so happens that the first, um, that in the first n levels, all of the random variables are zero, um, uh, then that gives you kind of um, effectively two to the n independent chances to um, to reach infinity quickly, and that biases the behavior of t infinity in the negative direction. Um, if all of those variables are one, that's going to push the um, the behavior in the positive direction. But effectively, so t infinity is a um, is, is 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 sort of determined by the early generations of the of the tree in some in some sense. Um, it's um, it's for, more formally, it's the limit of the of, of a of a certain martingale associated with the tree, the derivative martingale. But um, I don't I don't want to get um, too much into that. Um, uh, it's a good question, though. It's a it, it took um, some effort to understand uh, what was going on there. I mean, for the community. Um, uh, okay, good. Any other questions before I move to the critical case, which will occupy the rest of the talk? Okay, great. Um, 
So now I want to uh, talk about um, the critical case. Okay. So it's um, it's not hard to see uh, that the um, so on the linear scale, the first passage time to level n is now zero. Okay. Um, in fact, the sort of you can you can kind of get that from this sort of expectation threshold type calculation. Um, uh, but um, we, I'd like to ask if we can say anything finer. And the answer is yes. So there's a um, a remarkable paper um, that I mean I'm still um, learning things from this paper to this day, uh, even though I've known about it since about 2008. Um, no, 2005. Um, uh, so so this is um, work of uh, Decking and Host from 1991. Uh, so they proved that um, T n uh, in fact, grows doubly logarithmically, and uh, converges almost surely to uh, to one after rescaling by log log n. And in fact, they show um, they prove uh, str a str um, stronger statements. Um, so, well, in particular, they prove that um, T n minus uh, log log n is uh, order one in probability, okay? Um, it does not converge in distribution um, because there's sort of uh, lattice effects um, effectively. This is, this is always an integer and this is not always an integer and it's closer to or further from integer values at different times. So, um, but there are subsequential um, uh, distributional limits. Okay, um, and the word show is missing there. Okay, so the rest of the the rest of my time, I'm going to spend giving you a bit of an idea of um, of why this is true, um, and that's uh, really um, uh, uh, sort of the preparation for um, Jack Hansen's talk, which follows, because um, we're going to, I mean, our joint work sort of adapts some of these ideas to the lattice setting. Okay, um, so. Um, so uh, I'm going to break this up into four steps. Uh, step one is another first moment uh, calculation. Okay, so let me write um, let me write Pn for the set of nodes at level n, uh, which um, are connected to the root uh, that are in the cluster of the root. So um, so this is uh, C zero. Uh, intersection Ln. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to compute the first moment of this quantity. How many nodes do we expect uh, to be in the cluster of the root? Well, there's two to the n possible nodes. And then uh, for each node, we can ask about the probability that its first passage time to the root is zero. That by symmetry, this could be any fixed uh, node at level n. Okay. Well, um, this is just um, uh, the probability. Remember, now we're in the, the p equals a half setting for the rest of the talk. So this is fair coin tosses. We want all n to come up zero. Um, so that has probability two to the minus n. So we expect exactly one node uh, to survive. OK. Um, just need a little more space here. Okay, um, so so much for step one. That was that was the easiest of the four steps. Uh, step two um, is uh, to compute the second moment. Okay, um, sneak preview. Step three will not be to compute the third moment. Um, uh, but uh, so what do I want to do? Um, I, I'm going to compute in a second. I'm going to compute the second moment of this Pn. Okay, um, uh, but just before I do that, let me note, let, let me uh, make a quick observation. So if I fix a node at level n, what's the expected size of Pn 
given that um, that u is in Pn. So if I tell you that a particular node, um, I'm going to grab a picture now. If I tell you that this particular node uh, u is in Pn, that means that all of these values along this path are, are zeros, right? Then now how many more nodes do I expect to, um, to pick up as a consequence? Well, you know, I pick up this purple neighbor of u with probability a half, because now all that needs to happen is this one edge is, uh, uh, has value zero, and then uh, that neighbor is in Pn. And I also, if I go up two levels in the tree, I also get um, a half a node on average, because the expected number of nodes in this subtree connected to the root here by a zero path is one, and then I also need this edge to, uh, to come up zero, which has probability a half. Okay, so, if, so from each of the other subtrees, um, given that u um, has a zero path to the root, in each of the subtrees hanging off of that path, I also get um, a half a node on average. And so this value is, um, is a, um, well, I get, the, I get u for sure, and then I get an n minus one over two for those remaining n minus one subtrees. So that's n plus one over two. Okay. Um, and so now, uh, is, that, is that clear enough? That's just basic use of symmetry. So, um, so, that tell, so now for the second moment, I can just ask about the expected number of pairs um, uh, of no This is about asking about the expected number of pairs of nodes in um, Pn. So that's asking about the probability that the first passage time to u is zero and the first passage time to v is zero. Okay, but let me split that up now by first fixing the node u and then summing over um, v. So if I write this probability as a conditional probability, first I have probability two to the minus n that, uh, that u makes it into Pn. And then I have um, the um, expected number of other nodes that I pick up once I know that, uh, that, that u is in, uh, is in Pn, okay? Um, and that's the that's why I did I sort of split off this auxiliary computation. This gives us a sum of a two to the minus n times n plus one over two, um, and uh, there's two to the n sum n's. So that's just um, that's just giving us a uh, n plus one over two in total. Okay. Any questions about that computation? I'd like to um, notice something. So it's not a hard computation. Everything is very symmetric. Um, it all works out very cleanly. Um, so let me expand on it a tiny bit because I can give you a little bit of intuition that'll be useful shortly. Um, if I ask about the expected size of PM, given that U is in PN, so here I'm thinking of um, m as being less than or equal to n. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at some higher level m in the tree and saying, if I know that u is in pn, how many nodes do I, how many nodes do I expect to find in pm? Okay, well, um, what happens below level m really doesn't matter for this, uh, for, for, for this computation. All, the, only if, the only information I'm effectively being given here is that there's this zero path to level m, okay? And so this expected value is, is just um, m plus one over two. It's the same computation before I just throw away the levels below m, okay? And so that tells me that um, if I look at the expected um, number of um, nodes in, in the cluster of the origin at levels one, zero up to n, okay, at all of those levels, given that, uh, that u is in Pn, okay, then that's just like the sum, it's, this, it's the sum of all of these quantities, the sum m from zero to n, m plus one over two, which is a half uh, n plus two choose two, uh, if my uh, uh, memory serves me, or if um, I didn't mess up. Okay, so that's saying that, um, if I tell you, um, 
So that so what are the collection of facts we now have? Um, the first moment told us that we we only expect one node in and one node at level n in the cluster of the origin on average. But given that we have one such node, then on average we actually expect n nodes at, at level n on average, order n, and n squared nodes, order n squared nodes in the first n levels. Okay, and um, that sort of uh, leads to uh, a theorem which I think it's fair to um, give to Kolmogorov. I didn't um, look up the exact reference, uh, which is that um, the probability that um, the um, that this first passage time is zero. That's the probability that the that this critical tree has height at least n is in fact two plus little o one over n. Okay. And uh, this um, this quadratic growth here um, is um, say is in fact um, uh, correct. So the probability that the um, origin is um, connect the, the cluster of the origin um, uh, has size at least n squared is also decaying as one over n. So these were the um, these were the statements about um, exponents that I said earlier in the talk. This is sort of the statement that the um, diameter exponent is one, and this is the statement that the um, uh, um, the size exponent is uh, is a half. Okay. Um, okay. Questions about that? So, uh, I mean, the main thing to keep in mind is, um, uh, it, I mean, this, th this is sort of, um, this is sort of key for what follows, I guess it's fair to say. Um, the, the point is if, uh, if the cluster is, um, uh, if you only expect one node, but then once knowing you have it, you somehow jump up to N nodes that predicts this kind of constant over N um, probability of, of actually seeing that node. Okay, so um, so the third step is an amplification argument. So um, let's. Um, wh what do I mean by that? Um, let's let's imagine um, not starting, not looking at the cluster at the root, but going down some number k of levels and um, and exploring the clusters of all those nodes down to level n. Okay, so for um, for k between zero and n, I'll write uh, p n k for the number of nodes at level n, such that the passage time from v k to v is zero. Okay, where here uh, I'm using v k to denote the um, ancestor of v um, in l k. Okay, so this is the um, this is equivalently the number of nodes in Ln with a zero path uh, to level k. Okay, so um, this picture probably wasn't really worth um, drawing in advance, but. Um, Right? The point is now we have two to the k. This gives us two to the k chances to reach level n, um, and uh, you can again work out that well. It's sort of uh, I mean it's immediate that the expected size of p n k is two to the k. There's just each node at level k on average has one descendant at level n in its cluster. Um, that's a fact we saw from before. But now um, when you do the second moment computation, you um, you gain a fair amount of independence. Okay, so um, uh, I won't. I might not uh, go through every detail of this. Let's see. Um, but um, once again, we can write this out as a sort of sum over pairs of the probability that um, that u's in p n k and v's in p n k. Okay, and now. Um, the point is um, that if we uh, 
if we think about um, sort of first summing, so uh, fixing the node in, in, in uh, fixing a node at level n, and then summing out over v, what's going to happen? Well, we'll get a contribution like we did before from nodes in the same subtree. They'll have, they'll have the same sort of dependent structure that we previously saw arise. Um, but in all the other subtrees, we just see a sort of independent um, behavior because those paths don't share any edges in common. Okay? And so um, what, you, uh, what you end up with after, um, after you, um, uh, so then you've got uh, sort of sum over V in the same subtree. And then V in a different subtree. Um, I'm, I'm skipping a few steps, uh, but they're easy steps. I mean, it's this, because of symmetry, all of this is really um, sort of straightforward explicit computation. Um, what you end up with is, um, is that you get, f um, out of this, you get a, a four to the K, and then you get a two to the K times N minus K plus three over two. Okay, and this term here is just the first moment squared. Okay, so the second moment is the first moment squared plus this correction. And what that tells you is that the variance of P and K is, um, well, so uh, what do you need? Um, it's, uh, there was a question, uh, did Bramson do uh, branching random walk or BBM? Um, uh, I think he just did uh, B, uh, BBM. Um, actually, this is a question from uh, Yu Yun uh, asking about mm -hmm. um, a little bit uh, just above. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that um, I, uh, maybe I won't get distracted from the story right now. It's a it's a bibliographic uh, question, so um, we can address it offline. Um, uh, right. So um, so this variance, the question is whether or not um, how this term here compares to two to the k right? Because we want to know whether this gets up as big as, this, as the first moment squared. Um, so the, this says that the variance is, is of the order of the first moment squared um, uh, if n is uh, at most uh, 2 to the k, and it'll be uh, little o of the first moment squared if n is little o of two to the k. Okay, so that's, um, this is saying log n is at most k plus order one. And this, this is the case when uh, k is um, substantially bigger than one on an additive scale. Okay. Um, so then, um, uh, then just a use of Chebyshev inequality. Uh, uh, tells us that, um, say, in the first case, um, the the cluster has a decent chance of being um, sort of of the order of its expected value. So the probability that that ratio, the ratio between the cluster size and its ex or the p and k and its expected value is say between a half and two, is bounded away from zero. Uh, so whenever n is um, at most order two to the k. And um, more strongly, so P and K uh, divided by its expected value uh, will converge in probability to one whenever uh, N is little o of two to the K. Okay. Um, so notice already, if we, if we apply this, um, uh, with say k um, bigger than uh, log n, so that n is little o of two to the k, this already tells us that we expect that there will with high probability be a path from some node at, uh, at, at depth order log n down to level n. So the, then the first passage time is at most of order log n um, because we could just follow that path and then it doesn't matter what happens above. Okay, but that's, um, 
that's not what we're aiming for. We're aiming for log log n. And so I'll, I'll try to give you a sort of two minute description of um, why we get log log n. Okay, so that's step four, which is to iterate. Okay, and um, I think uh, here the best thing to do is just um, uh, import these pictures and talk to you about them um, because I don't want to run over time. So let me just point out that in this computation, so up here I was looking at um, this quantity uh, P and K, the number of nodes at level N that who's, who were in the same cluster as their ancestor at level K. All that mattered for that computation is the fact that those, that these nodes are incomparable. They're in, none of them is a descendant of the, of another. And so um, the, in the, in the um, second moment computation, all that matters is uh, sort of whether or not the nodes are, um, uh, the pairs are in the same subtree or indistinct subtrees. Okay, so that same computation would have worked for any set of two to the k incomparable nodes, not just those particular ones. Okay, so I could run the same sort of computation from some arbitrary set u of nodes. Um, you know, u is uh, u1, u2, up to um. You know, maybe they're here, here, and here. And look at all of the descendants at level n of those nodes, and I would get a similar result, okay? But in fact, I don't just need to use the descendants at level n, I could use all of the descendants up to level n and get substantially more, uh, a sort of substantially larger collection of nodes, okay? So what I'm doing now, in other words, is starting from some set of nodes, maybe the first set really is um, just a level, a, a given level in the tree, and growing all of the um, all of the clusters off of those nodes, okay? And um, so, uh, here I'm imagining that my first set has size M, okay? Well, um, then this result of Kolmogorov says that if I, um, if I do that, um, the odds of seeing a cluster of size n squared of height of height n of height m and um, volume m squared is about one over m. Okay, and so um, if I have m trials, then then sort of on the whole, I am going to end up with order m squared uh, uh, nodes and uh, reach out to depth m. Okay, and now. Um, I'm going to repeat that, but I'll just use the, the, the external boundary of, the, of that first um, collection of trees as the, as the set of roots of a new exploration process. Now these nodes are no longer all at the same level, but they're incomparable, okay? And so um, I'll use this set here um, as a, uh, of blue nodes as, as a sort of... Um, as a, as the as the set of roots of a new collection of trees, and now because the volume at the first level, so we started with m nodes, and the volume grew to m squared. So now this boundary has size of order m squared, and um, the um, the cluster size exponent a half here tells us that if we at the second level when we grow m squared independent trees, in fact we're going to get a number of nodes, which is of order m to the fourth, okay? And then we use the external boundary of those nodes as the set of roots of, um, of another exploration process. And, um, and when we do so, we get order m to the eighth nodes and we continue in that manner, okay? So the point is that the, the number of nodes squares at each step if you iterate this process, okay? And so um, the number of squarings to reach um, uh, 
n nodes total well um, is log base two of log n. Okay. Um, so in fact, we don't want to just reach n nodes. We want to reach um, depth n. But if we want to reach depth n, we only need n squared nodes total because of the relation between height and volume. So that's just one additional squaring. Okay. Um, so I'm really out of time. I know that last part is a little rush, but you're going to see a sort of more detailed version of it in a slightly different setting in Jack's talk. So let me uh, conclude uh, there. Thanks very much for listening. Thanks, Reggie. Uh, that was a great talk. Um, so I think we're running a little bit late. Uh, um, maybe there's time for uh, one or one quick question. So I would have to question how many of the results depend on the fact that it's just zero and one. Right. I mean, if so, it's integer valued, okay. Uh, yeah, so but, let, um, but if I'm, it has a tail close to zero, right. the law so, of this random variable, then it's less clear to me what happens. Yes, good, good question. So um, Jack will um, address that a little bit. Um, Basically, everything carries through, um, provided we know that there's a gap at the bottom of the support. So um, if, you, uh, uh, if you have zero, and then the smallest non-zero value that the essential infimum aside from zero is some alpha bigger than zero, then you can sort of tell the whole story. <laughs> but, if the, but if the random variable um, is very heavy tailed near zero, so to speak, then you can get genuinely different behavior. <laughs> Okay. Maybe maybe we should keep some of our questions for after uh, uh, Jack's talk, and Good idea. we can. I'm going to unmute everybody so we can thank Luigi uh, now. Or at least I'm going to try. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.